Bon dia. Buenos dias. Bon dia a tothom. Good morning to one and all and welcome a la seu de Fundesplay. Bienvenidas. Fundesplay headquarters. A la sede de Fundesplay. Hoy sabéis que es As you know, it's a very special day. Today, we will have an opportunity to think together about how we want to interact with the environment, what relationship we want with the environment and the creatures that live in it. And we're going to do that with a very special person, Francisco Vera. Francisco says that the planet will work if we take care of it and respect it. But in today's society, the way we live is leading us to destroy the planet. That's why he proposes a new purpose for life, to defend life, to stand for life. Thank you, Francisco, for being with us today. It's a true gift to listen to you and listen to your message. Francisco's concern from the environment began when he was very young, just seven years old. He began his activism in his home country, Colombia. Now, at age 12, he is leading a movement called the Guardians of Life. The Guardians of Life, made up of over 400 boys and girls from different countries, from different countries of South America. I said, uh, Latin America, but it's actually South America, but we're getting closer. But one very important thing to remember is the goal of this movement, to raise awareness on the environment, and above all, to give a voice to the boys and girls as the citizens that you are of the present. Here at Fundesplay, for over 50 years, we've been working to make the world a better place. And we're convinced that each of you, boys and girls, with your education, will be levers for change. Today's event is part of the Life program of the European Union. E-Life wants to contribute to the goals of the European Green Pact, the strategy from farm to table, and reduce the carbon footprint of foodstuffs, ensure food and public health and food availability, and ensure a fairer, healthier, and more sustainable food system. But this event would not be possible without the support of some other colleagues who are accompanying us in this movement, those of Plan for the Planet. Thank you, Eugenia, for working with us and cooperating in this. Well, thanks to all of you and thanks to Fundesplay for providing us with this facility and thanks to Francisco and giving us this opportunity to listen to Francisco. It's a pleasure to be here and present Plan for the Planet Spain, a foundation whose purpose is to plant one trillion trees around the world and to also, and no less important, educate, raise awareness and motivate boys, girls, and all young people to take action and to get down to brass tacks to fight climate change and ensure food, safety, and environmental justice. This foundation was created in 2007 by Felix Bingheimer in Germany, who was nine years old at the time, as many of you may be nine years old. And at this time, it's present in 75 countries around the world and over 100,000 boys, girls, and other young people have joined us becoming ambassadors for climate justice, as you will also be later on. So I hope that this event will help us get inspiration, get motivation, and above all, take action, to be a call for action. And with this, we'd like to give a warm welcome to Francisco, but he may, may now take the floor. Go ahead, Francisco. Thank you for being here. We're going to leave you on your own up here with your audience. So whenever you're ready, you may take the floor. First of all, 
Let me begin by thanking all of you. It's a pleasure to greet you today here. Thank you for that kind introduction that you've just given me. And Fundas Blay, I'd like to thank you for providing us with this facility and plan for the planet as well. Thank you for your cooperation in this common cause, a common cause that's so important as the environment, peace, climate justice, environmental justice, peace with nature. We've been at war with the planet for a long time, exploiting it and wasting natural resources and our home which is the only place we can live because there is no planet B. It's the only planet where we can live. Here we see this beautiful globe which shows our Earth, our planet. This one has no borders. It's not a geopolitical border. In our planet, there are borders. In Africa, unfair borders imposed after the colonial occupation of Africa and many, many borders, some that are disputed. But to begin, it's important to remember that on our planet, there are no real borders. What we do, the plans, the commitments that we have will reach the entire world. If we can take action for the climate, and in, anywhere we are, it will have an impact on the rest of the planet. We must have a global outlook, a global thinking process as we act locally. And so I want to begin with my guardians of life, companions. We begin in our territories, in our towns and cities, my friends. They are my friends. They were my schoolmates. I was in fifth grade, sixth grade. And with them, we began this guardians of life movement to create with them. And I would invite them to my home to make some signs, signs that had messages. The messages had to do with environmental issues and climate change. So we began to raise awareness on climate change, that the climate crisis was something very, very important. We began to make signs and get ready to demonstrate, demonstrate in our town there. And that's the way it was. So a few days after making those signs, next week, we arranged to meet on a Friday and we marched from my home to the city square, cleaning up. We began cleaning up along the way, and then we showed our signs in the city square. We chanted and sang and protested, and that's how it all began. We're just six friends in our town, Alcahuetia. As, uh, well, we were a little older than that, uh, nine years old. We were able to go out on our own, out on our own, but uh, it's a town about 30,000 people, two hours away from Bogota, and my grandmother walked with us and we had a bullhorn and those sorts of things. And that's how we began. We began working that way, taking action in our town. And then we began planting trees and having a weekly plan of activities. And then we reached the Congress of Colombia and asked them to pass laws to favor life. And we must clarify one thing. In society, to, to transform society, there are a number of different stakeholders, actors in climate affairs. As citizens, we are there. We can transform. We can have a major impact on climate change if we do that. There's another important stakeholder, governments, and those governments can take decisions and take action on the climate change to overcome it and mitigate it. And then companies, which are mostly responsible for climate change by emitting so much greenhouse effect gases, 
When these gases reach the atmosphere, they have a greenhouse effect. They absorb the rays of the sun and raise the temperature on the planet. Basically, those are the stakeholders who play a major role in society. But there's another very important one, and that is education, the educational community, schools, science, academics. They give us the reasons to justify that climate change is real. It's not just some idea that someone came up with, that someone's trying to scare us with, a story that they made up called climate change. No, that is not the case. That's how we began. And then the pandemic hit. During the pandemic, we had to rethink things. We began working at the, vir the virtual, the digital level. We began visiting schools, and that is why, because the basis of a society is education. The seed of a society is education, and a society germinates as of its education. It's like this plant. That's a great example. The seeds of our societies can be found in education. Civilizations have flourished in the history of mankind, like ancient Greece, thanks to education. And then ancient Athens, education was very important. That's what gave rise to the Greek philosophers. And that is what allowed civilization to grow in Athens. It was a city that was devoted to philosophy. And then you had Sparta that had a more military education. And that is how they train their people. To sum up, one of the pillars of our society is education. So we began working on educational, excuse me, environmental education, climate education, so that at schools and universities, they include climate affairs and climate science. That is why we have a program at the Guardians of Life program to go to schools, and we have projects to grow plants. We talk about the society, sustainable development goals and climate change and I'll tell you about a bit about that today as well. I've talked about education, the importance of education, how Guardians of Life was born, how that experience began, but it's very important to take action to mobilize our citizens in favor of life. First of all, because of what I said, there is no other planet on which we can find the same conditions for life as this one. Our planet is practically perfect. We are at a distance from the sun that allows us to have water in three phases, liquid, gas, frozen, solid, when it is ice. It allows us to have a temperature that is suitable for life and is stable for life, for life to be developed in optimal conditions. It's a spectacular planet. It is our home. But for some time now, for some centuries now, we began to emit greenhouse gases with industries such as ranching, hydrocarbons, plastic, more or less since the second industrial revolution. After that colonial occupation of Africa began to mine and extract natural resources to be used in these industries. And since then we've emitted many, many tons of carbon dioxide, but not just carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, all of the gases in aerosols that cause the greenhouse effect and heat up the planet. Climate change is normal. There have always been variations on the planet. The earth must regulate itself. It's like when you are running, then you get hot. Then when you stop and stop moving, you're not as hot, you are cooler. And that's the same way with the earth. The earth has regulated itself over long periods, millions of years, but they could take place over 200 million or 300 million years because the earth is very old, 4.5 billion years. And so these self-regulation movements are very gradual, very slow. And there's another characteristic of those climate changes that are normal for the earth, and that is the time 
over which they take place and that they have consequences but life continues to be possible there are climate changes but life is still possible we persist we stay alive but what is happening with today's climate change today's global warming the climate change is taking place very quickly so for there to be a variation in climate patterns there must be a minimal period of 30 years, but now it's happening in less than 30 years, in just a few years or decades. And that is what worries us so much, that the poles are melting, the level of the seas are rising, the oceans are rising. That is what is so worrisome, that it is a fast change, and it is threatening us with severe consequences for life. And it could even be a situation of the sixth mass extinction of species. There's an interesting article about that that was nominated for the Perlitzer Prize. And this prize or award rewards articles that seem fictitious or abnormal or outside reality, but are in fact real. And that is the case with climate change, that a biological species, the first biological species in the history of our planet can transform the planet and the climate to the extent that countries are disappearing. There are countries in Asia that, for example, Nauru, Fiji, countries that countries that are outside those climate measures that may be affected and the population has to immigrate and these people are called climate refugees those climate refugees immigrate to other countries to get a better life or in africa in addition to the social conditions that force people to migrate there are also climate conditions or the southwest asia southeast asia myanmar laos Cambodia. Indonesia. Indonesia. These are countries that are going to be affected by rising sea levels. And that will cause many, many climate refugees. And those consequences are having an impact on today's society. But as we face these things, we must take action. We must uh, get down to work. Espabilar is the word that they use here in Spain. We must take action to face these problems. We cannot stand still and watch. We feel worried, but we must not face it in a desperate way. We must face it in a hopeful way, with an echo hope. Although it is a difficult situation, if we don't have hope, we won't be able to do anything. And we must feel this hope. We must see this hope as something full of potential, full of commitments, commitments that we take at the citizen level. That's something that we must make the most of today. You have a voice. We have a voice as citizens. And we must make the most of this throughout history. We've never been listened to as much. Just like women, we children in the history of humanity have never been listened to. And in climate issues, and many wars begin this way of uh, seeing the other in a certain way because. People see themselves as superior. It's a patriarchal situation with patriarchies. But the case is, on the Earth, there are many species, thousands of species, many of which we don't even know yet. We all know some of the species on the planet. Among them, there's a species. Let me uh, take a sip of water for a moment, an essential resource for life, by the way. But as I was saying, among all these species, we have Homo sapiens, that's us. And Homo sapiens develops the capacity, the capability for reason. And therefore, we began to 
believe ourselves superior to other species and to be entitled to exploit the planet, to see it as a huge pantry, a huge storeroom where we just take the resources we need, where we extract, create products, sell those products, and then throw the waste away. And in that species are two geniuses, men and women. And men believe themselves superior to women. They abuse them and mistreat them. That's happened throughout history. Men have believed that. But then there are also human beings who are younger, who are young. That's us. Children. The word infant comes from infantis. It's a Latin or Greek word. It's part of our, our language comes from Latin and Greek as well. But anyway, infantis refers to those who are unable to speak until they are seven. And that's us children. And they've never listened to us before, but today we have many more guarantees to be listened to. And there are other places, other contexts, other conditions that force children to stay out of these debates. But you need to make the most of your possibility because education is like power and we can become leaders. We can become the leaders for these changes and transformations that must take place at the global level. You are the ones, we are the ones actually, speaking collectively, who can make a change. And so, with that in mind, to finish up with this talk and sum up what we wanted to discuss with you today, to offer you a little summary, after telling you all these things that have to do with the climate crisis, the situation that exists with our planet, and that it's the only planet we have, what we must do is take action with echo hope, as I said, something that is not empty but full of action and commitment, hope that takes into account other values, such as empathy. All of the matter in the universe is made up of small atoms, small cells. Those cells have other small, well, they're not cells. All matter is made up of atoms, and those atoms are made up of other sub-atoms or electrons or very small particles that keep the atoms together. Summing up, we are made up of the smallest particles. And all of these huge problems of such great magnitude come from that, from not respecting the other. And it's very simple. And we're told this over and over. You have to respect. You have to have empathy. You must express solidarity. You must think of others. But we tend to forget this. It's true that as a species, it's something that could be referred to as the human condition. We all work based on our interests. And yet... Sometimes those interests are not very good. Summing up, I think we can change all of this from the smallest level, from those values that we teach from the schools, values such as respecting life, respecting others, including and listening to others, boys, girls, women. It doesn't matter where they're from. It doesn't matter what their gender is. It doesn't matter. Any, nothing else matters because we're all equal at the end of the day. And to begin including nature in that, begin to include the other, the other life, other forms of life. We are not isolated from that. When we refer to the planet Earth, it's like, oh, the other species are just out there on the outside. Perhaps uh, not really respecting them. But the truth is, we all belong to nature. In fact, there's a concept called ecocide. As of the Second World War, there were the Nuremberg trials. And that is where they established terms like genocide, massacres of entire groups of humans, but now in the Rome 
statute, they're trying to establish a new concept, ecocide. When there is an indiscriminate uh, clearing of trees, and there's a group working on this in Spain, this idea of ecocide, when there's a clearing of a large number of trees, we are harming ourselves, not just the trees. That's ecocide. So, summing up, I'd like to invite you to exercise your citizenship in favor of life, to raise your voices and use all the tools that are available to you to defend life, to make changes so that transformations can take place in society, transformations that are so necessary, so urgent. I don't know if using the term urgent is appropriate. Yes, it is. Yes, then they are urgent. Oh, in my book that uh, I wanted to mention, it's a book I published a couple months ago. It's called Pregunta Francisco, Ask Francisco about climate change. What is climate change? It's a book that in a very educational, fun way, explains what climate change is, talking about changes in the climate, something that is normal over long periods of time, millions of years. But I did that in the book through interviews of leading figures who work for biodiversity in Latin America. I interviewed a wasteland, a páramo. It might sound like a very dark or empty place, but in Colombia, the páramo is an ecosystem full of life in the Andes Mountains, at a very high altitude, some 3,000, 4,000 or even 5,000 meters over the sea level. I interviewed this Paramo wasteland, I interviewed a hummingbird, I interviewed the oceans and even Earth itself and Mars to give us a view of now, with this uh, desertic, desert or yellowish uh, color, uh, we're still taking an interest in that planet. So I talked to Mars, and that's what the book is about. That's what I wanted to tell you about. With the hope, uh, with hope at all times. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for that, Francisco. And this is not the end. Yes, you can hear me. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. And we're going to continue enjoying and learning from you. But this time with another group of young people, a group of young girls who are participating in a journalism camp organized by the ARA newspaper with Fundespli, and they're going to interview you, Carla, Mila, Sira, Laia, and Flavia are now going to interview you, Francisco. So please go ahead with this interview space and an initial journalism experience for our young journalism camp participants. Hola. Hello, Francisco. Good afternoon. As you know, I think we know we are taking part in a journalism camp from the ARA newspaper here at Fundespli. And we're very excited to have you here because we'll be able to learn from you. And it's an honor for us to do so. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you, with the future journalist. So go ahead and ask me whatever you want. Let's start with our first question. Where did you get the inspiration to begin in activism? That began in my town, the town Vieta, as I mentioned, a very small town, small, if you compare it to a big city like Barcelona, Colombia is the second most biodiverse country in, on Earth. It 
is the most number of species per square kilometer, according to the UN. We have a friend from Argentina here, and in general, all that biodiversity is in Colombia and around the world. So I wanted to protect that. There were ducks and chickens, but the rivers, the Andes Mountains with its beautiful views. And I wanted to raise awareness on that. I think in my family, uh, did that for me. That's a very important thing for all of our lives. Uh, my family gave me uh, love for nature. Okay. What is the reason why you wrote the book? Why did you write the book? The reason I wrote the book was, as I said, I talk about climate change and the climate crisis. And so I wanted to transform and create and create a tool, a tool that would be available to everyone and for climate change to be understood because something this complex sounds too big to understand and we don't know where to begin. And this would be a tool to face climate change with environmental education and also claim our space as relevant citizens, although we're children. Okay. Now the next question. Do you think they pay more attention to you because you're a child? It's difficult because, it's like I said, children have never been listened to throughout history. Uh, children begin to speak. Well, in fact, we've always spoken, but there's something different about children, and that's that we're not listened to. But we now have a voice. We don't need to be given a voice. As I say, children need to be seen in spaces like this, speaking, raising their hand to speak. It's something unusual if you compare it to the tradition of our society, which doesn't really take children into account. So there's always a lot of challenges, and it has been difficult to get children's voice to be heard. What you said has inspired us a great deal. We'd also like to know, what can we children do to cooperate with this movement to stop climate change? And what can adults do? I would like to repeat a message to all citizens, to be more specific. Participation, organizations, you can create your own organization to mobilize people, to get petitions signed, to get your voice to be listened to. And I imagine you mean, yeah, uh, I imagine you mean the daily things we can do. Well, if we speak of the daily things, more specific things like diet, eating less meat, not using plastic, using other kinds of packaging such as glass or steel, not using plastic bags, using canvas or cloth bags, reusable bags in a word. And what else? In transportation, using more sustainable means of transportation, bicycles and so forth. I think in the end, it's about activism, becoming activists and realizing that we do have an influence. Each of us are influencers. When we hear this term, influencer, we think of people with lots of followers, thousands or millions of followers. But the truth is, an influencer can be each one of us. Each of us has the power to influence others, and we need to make the most of that for good for the environment. And as for adults, they need to create or guarantee a dignified and proper planet 
for coming generations. Do you have the hope of reverting and overcoming climate change? Of course, I think it's impossible. I think it's possible to do so. And in general, the outlook is difficult. But I think if changes and transformations can be made in our society, they'll allow us to advance toward a more sustainable present and future that takes life into account. And most importantly, that it be society for the future and the present that is more developed, a society that is developed in the fact that it takes care of life. I don't know if that's clear enough for you. Yes? Okay. And another question that we're curious about is, what's it like being an activist and having other responsibilities as going to school and things like that? Yes, of course. Uh, studying and being an activist Yes, I do go to school, but I'm also an activist. It's something that I combined. I always say that a day is long enough to do a lot of things. I also like to read. Aside from my schoolwork, obviously I do focus uh, on schoolwork. I'm in my first year of secondary education, that'd be like seventh grade. If you compare it uh, to the Spanish system, it would be the first year of mandatory secondary uh, education in Colombia at seventh grade. And I always uh, keep my focus on my schoolwork, on reading, and, you know, I'm in sports, all those activities. Well, we believe that you have a lot of responsibility. And so... When, if you ever feel anxious or worried about uh, the climate emergency, how do you handle that? How do you manage that? Well, with a lot of hope and peace of mind, serenity. Because when you begin to look and look at all these things, there is uh, such a thing as echo anxiety, but there's another page in my book that talks about echo hope. Here it is. And what I do is urge people to stay hopeful, to have hope. And so I have echo hope. When you urge people to do something, it's because you are doing it yourself. I do feel worried sometimes, but not, I've never felt a great, great deal of anxiety. And there are other things that worry us such as the decisions that are made about what to do with climate change, because the thing that most worries us, the most urgent thing, is not climate change itself, but the fact that governments are not doing much about it. So that's it. We also wanted to ask you, what would you like to do in the future? Uh, at the professional level. In the future, aside from the environment, I'm very interested in quantum physics. Right now, I'm learning about the principle of uncertainty and determination, the laws of Maxwell. These are things that I really like. And I don't really talk about this much, but I am interested in them. And in uh, the future, I'd like to study that. Or, uh, or also, I enjoy geography and history. And I have uh, spoken about that. When I go to a place, I tell about the history of that place. Or from my home, I tell about this history of the emancipation from the Caroline Empire or European history, World War II. If you don't know your history, you're condemned to repeat it. So you must know your history. So I say those three things, and uh, but I have time to decide. So it would be between science, let's just say astrophysics, but not really astrophysics, physics, geography, and history. Hola. 
Bueno, okay. Thank you very much for that very interesting set of questions and answers. Now, I'd like to open it up to our audience. If they have any other questions, they may now ask them using the microphone. Hi, my name is Aja, and the question is, do you have an idol? What's your name? Aja. Aja. Okay, Aja. Yes, I do. I have an idol that we may share in common or with someone else in the room, because like you, I like Aaron Play a lot. So I would say out and play or Ibai, you can't really compare them because they are legends. You can't compare legends. So it's difficult. Aside from out on all my friends, as for idols, you know, I do follow out and play. But uh, in climate issues, I admire all my friends who, who had this project to create this whole movement. Without them, it would not have been possible. And Greta, a great figure of reference. Maybe you've heard from her, uh, heard her speak. Those would be the idols that I have. And the Pope, Francis, who's also uh, concerned with climate and environmental issues. Okay, one more question. No applause yet, please. Hello. My name is Erna. Did you ever classmates uh, ever criticize you or say anything to you at school? No, in fact, they were the ones who joined my movement, and those are the ones that I began with. They agree with everything that I stand for, and we sat down in the city square in silence. It was in the middle of the pandemic, so it wouldn't uh, be a good idea to yell or speak very much. So we sat down in silence with signs. And that's how we carried out these activities. And we had some flyers. We printed up some flyers and distributed them around the town for everyone to get more awareness on these issues. And so my classmates really did agree with me. I remember a teacher, someone who's very important to me. I remember a word that I learned from him, indagar, it means investigate. It was my chemistry and biology professor. Juan Carlos Pareja, and I ran into, ran into him on the street, and he had his baby in his stroller, and he joined our demonstration. So I had a lot of support from my classmates and from that teacher. Okay, any further questions? Yes? My name is Lexi. What uh, year were you born? 2009. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks to all of you, boys and girls. What about among the adults? Are there any questions among the adults? Go ahead. One more. Do you have any plans to set up a non-governmental organization? Well, we have the Guardians of Life, Guardianes por la Vida. 
And I spoke of the beginnings of this movement, but I didn't tell you what we're doing now, the present, okay? I went back into the past, but the Guardians for Life is an organization of children that works to raise awareness about environmental issues and the voice of children. We now have 400 children in Colombia, members. We're working with schools in an environmental education program. And everything that I said about climate change education, we have a nursery that you're welcome to join. We're giving talks in citizenship training, climate training, so we bring in experts who talk about human rights, talk about climate change, so that the things that we are fighting for are easy to understand and accessible for everyone. And that's what we're working on at Guardians for Life up to now. I just have one question myself, if I may. The nursery that you mentioned, what sort of... Uh, are we, is it like an idea incubator? Or, well, the idea was to work on climate issues, and so we're, we're setting up workshops and things from the territory. What we like is at this incubator, we discuss, learn, and then ideas come out, like planting a garden or running some kind of activity, that some activity come out of every presentation or workshop. Okay, any further questions? My name is Maite. As an activist, what's been the greatest obstacle that you've faced? As an activist, the greatest obstacle for me has been my age. It's very difficult, although we are being heard more now. It's hard to be heard as a child. Another challenge is that the conditions in which we exercise our activism at such a young age are not the ones that people think that are necessary to be heard. For example, age as a condition doesn't allow us to express our voice or we don't have enough of a voice as a child. A lot of people criticize and it's not necessarily constructive criticism. The truth is, it's great to have criticism as long as it is given from respect in a constructive way. It's more of a destructive criticism that we get. That has been a great obstacle. Okay, thank you. And now with that, before we finish this first part of our activity and take a break, we have a little gift for you, Francisco. And you're going to get it from someone that you met this morning, who, like you, is also an activist. She's an activist for peace, climate change, environmental education. It's all linked, isn't it, in the great value of peace. So here she is. Nadia Gulam. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nadia. I admire you for all the work you do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Francisco, for being here. This is a book called The Country of Birds Without Wings. It's about my country. As you know, I've told you a bit about how we have suffered through wars and many boys and girls, and myself included, have suffered through the war. In this book, I talk about the lives of the refugees who live in refugee camps and the situation of boys and girls in Afghanistan. Thank you very much, and I hope that everyone can enjoy peace. Thank you very much. Very well. Now we'll continue with the second part. We'll take a break. We have some refreshments outside on the lawn. 
the outdoor area so to refresh ourselves and think a bit about all these messages that we've heard from Francisco and you've said so much and so many interesting things if you would allow me to take just one that really touched my heart and I will convey it to all of you because sometimes you have to repeat these messages that all boys and girls can be influencers and we have that power. Let's activate that power. Thank you very much, Francisco.